How's it going you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Solar. Today I want to talk about solar panel angle. What is the angle that you're mounting your panels? And if you're having to make a choice, what is that trade-off? If you had a choice and maybe it's cheaper to mount flat, but there's a little additional cost and you can get some angle on your panels, is it worth it? What's that power differential in terms of the output between the two? Now, in addition to this test, I wanna jump in and show you for your specific location, what is that ideal panel angle? Now, this is not the same all year round, so you should also consider seasonality because that will change for your location. But first up, let's go ahead and look at the test setup, and the sun's just coming out, so we'll kick off the test here shortly. So we have two different sample points. We have the flat panels, which are two 100 watt Thunderbolt panels from Harbor Freight. Now, believe it or not, these actually go over 100 watts in the standard test conditions. So if you have perfect conditions, you're gonna get over 100 each. So we have these wired in series because I wanna actually up the voltage. If there are clouds that roll through, one panel might dip under the minimum voltage for the EcoFlow Delta Pro, where is where we're gonna land and store the energy. So we don't wanna dip under that or it'll affect the test results. And then our other sample over here, which is angled at 29 degrees. 29 degrees matches my roof angle because I want to do that test between the flat and roof because I am considering a flat pergola to put some panels on. So I want to know what is the difference in terms of how much power loss I'll have if I mount those flat. So we'll take each of the two 100 watt panels wired in series and we'll actually go through these little RC power analyzers. So we'll wire the panel into the source and then we'll connect up the EcoFlow conversion cable to the load side. This will give us voltage, amperage, and a bunch of other metrics, but most importantly, I use these to accumulate how much energy we've actually generated from each of the two samples, and then that's where we get our percent difference. Both of the EcoFlows are around 44 and 43, so each of these units will have plenty of capacity to store the energy that we generate. I wanna show you a quick reference where you can use your address and get the ideal mounting angles for your location. So for mounting angle, look right below this video in the description. Depending on what device you're on, sometimes you'll have to press the more to expand that out to get the link. But here is the solar panel mounting angle calculator. Now this is, goes over to Footprint Hero, but on everydaysolar.com, we are starting to work on different calculators. And I really wanna get your feedback. Let me know what you guys need help with and we can develop those calculators over on our website for both DIY projects, but also your professionally installed systems on your home. So for this one, all you have to do is just scroll down and you're just gonna give your address. So we can do 123 Main Street, Chicago, Illinois works. And it's pretty simple. What this is doing, it's pulling the latitude out of the latitude longitude location for your actual address. And it's giving you that as, hey, this is a good average. If you had to pick an average angle and just keep that permanently mount with no adjustment, it's just gonna give you your latitude. If you're gonna go lower or higher than that, I would tend to go a little bit lower. I think that's a better trade-off. But you can see seasonally, there is quite the difference. So in summer for Chicago, 17.3 degrees is optimal, but in winter it goes all the way up to 47.3 and you can even see the monthly breakdown here. So this can help you make decisions like if you're doing ground mounted system and you're doing a trade-off analysis between a ground mounted one angle setup where it's very hard to adjust that angle or something that you can actually easily adjust for these different seasons. So you can start to make that trade off and then the testing that we do here in a minute, you're gonna see how much power loss do you get when you change that angle. Now, if you're looking at a professionally installed system, grid tied system, that's most likely on your roof. So if you need to know your roof degree angle, you probably have a good reference just in your pocket. You can use the measurement app on your Apple or Android device, and there's a bubble level feature inside that app, which you can lay on the surface, and then it'll give you that exact slope in degrees. And then if you need a cross-reference, just go to Google and look for a roof pitch to degrees conversion, and you'll see a table that'll give you a reference. So my 29 degree roof angle corresponds to close to a 712 roof pitch. And as you gather more information on your system that you need for your home to completely offset your power bill, a good place to start is just what size is that overall system for my current needs and maybe also my future needs, especially if you're gonna start getting an EV or two in the household. 
and also what corresponding would that cost. Now there's a link in the description where I started things off to ultimately get my 11 kilowatts that's installed on my home. You can type in a little information to kind of tailor it for your location, size home, and overall need, and then it'll estimate that size and cost for you. Then they can connect you to local installers, multiple installers, where you can start to get more refined bids on what that'll actually take to get on your home. Now, specifically for this test, let's take a look at the results between the flat two panels in series, the 200 watts, how much have we actually generated in terms of energy compared to this 29 degree pitch that corresponds to my roof pitch. Now here are the conditions during the two hour test. I took a time lapse of the sky. You can see we had great sunlight between 1 p.m. and 3 p.m. A few clouds here and there, but overall really strong sun during the test conditions. And then here are our results from just over a two hour test. Looking at these little power analyzers, this is the pitched roof or pitched panels. Lower left hand corner, we'll get watt hours 388. And then comparing that to the flat roof, the lower left hand corner we'll scroll through to watt hours 313. So 388 compared to 313. So that's substantial. Comparing those two results, we're looking at a 19.4% decrease in the power that the two panels put out flat compared to the 29 degree angle. Just for reference, it's September in my area and 29 degrees is pretty much the exact degree that you'd want to be set at to get the most out of the sun. So it's pretty much the ideal scenario. But that is a substantial difference and definitely something you should be taking into consideration for your own home. If you're looking at a trade-off between flat and then getting a little bit more mounting hardware, it just might be worth the investment, especially stretching that out over years and years. Also something you need to consider is the gauge of your wire. This is especially critical if you're doing long runs between your solar array and your battery banks or your charge controller or maybe your portable power station. You can get a lot of power loss by selecting the wrong gauge. So check out this video right here. I'll run you through the test and we'll compare the power loss across three different gauges of wire. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.